everybody. Welcome back. Thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate it. Uh, we've had quite of a, a little bit of an uptick in, in subscribers and those people viewing and leaving the comments. The comments are wonderful. Uh, a lot of really good uh, suggestions. Uh, mentor, mentoring from, from some people who have been doing this for a long time. Really appreciate all those constructive comments that you guys are leaving. Uh, thank you very much. So uh, in this video, I thought I'd go through and kind of show some of the things that we've done here uh, at Giles Honey over the last few years. And, and you know, we're, we're basically still trying to get our footing. So so we're kind of dib dabbling with, with a little bit of everything. So um, obviously we have the bees themselves, so we're going to be in the honey side of it. Uh, I guess you don't really have to. I, I know some beekeepers that, that don't want anything to do with honey. They just want the bees. But uh, we're not where we took the honey approach. So I, th I thought I'd go through and show you some of the things that we have done and then kind of kind of ask for feedback. You know, what, what are some of the things that you guys have done that has worked or not worked in your area? So, um, you know, honest feedback that that's that's kind of what we're asking for uh that's what we're looking for that's that's part of the reason why we're posting these videos is try, trying to build a collaboration uh, with people of people online so so anyways um obviously we're in the honey so we've we've uh, dabbled with with how we want to market our honey and um you know i know a lot of times people will sell it and it'll be in mason jars and, and that sort of thing and so or they they go and they buy those plastic uh honey jars and, and we wanted to kind of take a different approach. Uh, one of the things that we wanted to do was have um, a, an emphasis on environmentally friendly, um, reusable, th th those sort of things where not just recyclable, but reusable. And, and so that, that being said, we decided to try to stay away from plastic when we could and go to glass. And with that, we can, we can build in different, different sales and marketing techniques where you know, we can give discounts for customers who bring their jars back and refill them. We, we have a bottling uh, container and they, they bring it back all clean. We fill up their container, give their container back to them and, and sell it to them at a, at a discount over what we generally do for the retail uh, price. So we, that's the approach we took. And some of the things we've done, and, and I'll be honest, this one here is the one that is that has really done the most for us. And I don't know if you can see that or not, but... Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any honey in it because but because uh, we sold it all out, but there's a little glass bear jar um, the jars themselves are, again we we strive for a quality product when we sell our honey. That being said, these jars sell the product. people love them for, for whatever reason for multiple reasons number one they they kind of have a have an appeal over over a standard honey jar. A lot of people see these you know you see these everywhere, and obviously we have them. But we we uh, we look for things that's going to catch people's eyes. Uh, these tend to do that, and they've they've worked out really really well for us. I have an uncle who will take these, and uh, when he's done with the honey, and sometimes he's just bought the the empty jars. And I've had people buy just the jars from me. They they'll use these 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 little coin jars for their kids or grandkids, fill them up, and then give them to those kids as a gift. You can buy the caps of these with the bank slot in it for the coin slots to, to turn these into a bank, uh, little, little piggy bank type deals uh, for kids. And so, you know, this, this between the honey in it and, and the jar itself has been, probably been one of the best things we've had. Uh, we'll, we're hoping to do eh, three, 400 of these this next year. Uh, and, you know, for a small, for a small apiary, I, I think we've done really well. Um, we, we're also going to be carrying some of these traditional ones. Um, I say traditional. This this kind of when you see honey jars, this is more in line with what you will see. And uh, the only the only issue that we're having with carrying this and this is the different lids. They're they're two different sizes. So now you've got to order bulk lids in two different sizes. That's the only down thing that I don't like about these. There's a different style of, of glass jars that, that has the same exact type of cover. And uh, I've used those before and unfortunately I ran out and, and I just bought these really cheap towards the end of last year because I needed jars uh, just to get me through the year. So I'm probably gonna go away from these perhaps and go to what they call the skep jars. And anyone that's seen the old honeybee skeps uh, from years ago, it's shaped like that, but it has the same type of lid. As this one and that way that we can interchange the lids we don't have to worry about it 
because it this that comes in handy especially when people bring the jars back to to refill a lot of times i'll give them a brand new lid so i'll take their old one if they even bring the old one back throw it away put a brand new one on it a uh, new label uh that i have the fajal's label uh tamper seal it and then give it back to them it looks looks brand new so having having the same lids uh, saves you a lot of trouble it has at least us so this one here is still questionable as far as if we're going to keep it or not and then the other thing we've kind of experimented with is the little sample size these here come in really really handy around christmas time if you have honey left a lot of times we're, we're sold out by then but uh, these here for stocking stuffers small office gifts and things like that it's, especially if you have multiple types of honey uh, then you can use these and kind of do like a sample pack. They come in really handy. Uh, I've done a little bit of them, but not much, because like I said, usually I sell out just using these. These ones are when people, you know, bring their own jars and buy in bulk. So that's the standard honey that we've done. And like I said, if, if you've got any other suggestions, different sizes, things like that, that has worked for you, I would love to hear about it. The other part of honey that we have uh, dabbled with and we've had relatively good success. The only problem is we just haven't had time to focus on it uh, because people are just buying the regular honey and that is creamed honey. Um, I A lot of people that I have uh, that don't like honey, I've got, well, I shouldn't say a lot. I've got people that don't like plain honey, but like creamed honey. And if you've never seen or tasted creamed honey before, it's honey that has been whipped with um, crystallized honey. And the crystallized honey is, is really, really fine. Uh, it's not like the crystallized honey that you, you get just by leaving your jar on a shelf for months at a time and it finally crystallizes. It's a different type of crystallized honey. It has really, really fine molecules. And you put that a small batch of that in with regular honey, slowly churn it, kind of like butter, and uh, for four or five minutes, you pour it into whatever jar you want, put it in a cool, dark place for about a week, and when you're done, it comes out, this here's a little warm, but it comes out almost the consistency of peanut butter. And you spread it on toast, put it on, you know, different fruit, apples, berries, whatever. Uh, a lot of people really, really enjoy it. This here is a plain one uh, that, that we've done. And this here is the last jar that we have. It's gonna be our, our uh, what we call the mother for next year. We use this with with plain honey um, and then churn it together to make more creamed honey. I've got one other jar. This is a cinnamon one. And this, I've got a couple of customers that they, they were a little, little, I won't say mad, but a little disappointed that I didn't sell it this last year. Like I said, just because I just didn't have time. It is a little bit more labor intensive to make creamed honey versus just bottling regular honey. But the markup on it is also a little bit better as well. So um, we've we've done that. We also have had a, another one that has done really well with it, with with our sampling. We haven't done, gone full scale with it yet, but uh, and that is lemon honey. Uh, we'll take small lemon crystals and mix in with a plain creamed honey. And if you like lemon and, and honey together, if you want to put it in your tea or anything like that, it, it is fabulous. And uh, Creamed honey, just like regular honey, as long as it's, you know, under a certain moisture content and doesn't have a lot of outside, you know, micro whatever getting into it, as long as you keep them sealed up, they're good virtually forever. You know, um, you know, obviously you have to be careful about how you, the environmental effects on it, but honey in itself is, is good forever. So that's our honey. Again, love to hear anything that you guys have. Um, obviously, we're not selling this yet, but this is what we're dabbling with as far as some of the byproducts of honey. Um, one of them is mead, and this is my very last jar of my sizer. I've got a couple other batches going, and we'll be making another vid video over the next few days and posting in February for our, for our monthly mead uh, video series. This here's our sizer. We have uh, another sizer going. We have a strawberry rhubarb going, and we have uh, our sparkling ginger uh, that is still in its primary fermentation and that can be racked off anytime. But uh, this here is something we're just dabbling right now just to kind of see if there might be a potential for it. And then this here is uh, my a braggot beer, an English braggot. Go ahead and make this up right now, actually. It's been one of those weeks. 
So this is a, a honey beer, and it's kind of a, a, a hybrid between a, a standard beer and a mead in the way that it's made. And you can make, make Braggot beer uh, you know, a million different ways, just like you make mead a bunch of different ways. But, uh, so we've da we're dabbling a little bit with, our, with the uh, brewing side of things as well. And um, for the first beer, that's, I like it. It's a little bit, little spicy, and uh, could use a little bit more body, but that's something we're, we're working on. So as far as selling, the honey obviously is the big thing. The fermentation and the brewing, we're doing that as a hobby. The next thing that we're, we've been messing around a little bit with, and no, these are not gold bars. <laughs> I wish they were but uh, is our, our beeswax. And so we sell these, let's get a piece you can see, these little, uh, you know, one ounce blocks. We've got some of these, and I've got people that have different, uh, different crafts and, and things like that that they use this for, but we're trying to find other, other products as well, because quite honestly, at the moment, you know, it's, it's, it's somewhat labor intensive compared to the honey, and you know, the, the, the markup for it for us at this time, using our procedure is not that that great. Other people can make more money at it. So we're looking at different ways of kind of doing a value added to try to try to increase our profit on this. So one of the things we're going to do is make um, furniture polish. So very simple. We've already done it a few times. We've given out a few samples. Everyone seems to like it. That that wants a good wood wood furniture polish, but it, it's basically one part beeswax just slight, uh, slightly over, you know, 50, not, um, probably 40, 45% beeswax, a little over 50% of, uh, I use food grade min mineral oil, just so you can use it on things like um, uh, chopping blocks and stuff like that, or, or cutting boards is the word I'm looking for. And then I add, you know, any type of essential oils and stuff like that for scents and uh, different, different other things. So we're gonna go ahead and make that. I'm not gonna sit there and show you the whole detail of it. You put the wax in a double boiler, you melt it down, you add the mineral oil, you add your essential oils, you dump it in a container and let it cool. So, um, you know, maybe someday down the road, I'll, I'll show you the, the, uh, the process, but that's, that's really it in a nutshell. If, if you wanna see it, let me know. I'll, I'll do a video on it. I've, I have no problem with that, but I, I don't wanna bore people either. I just kind of getting ideas and giving ideas. So I'm gonna go ahead and make up a small batch of that and I'll bring it back and show you. Okay, so here we are back, and we have our furniture polish all made, and it's still a little warm and soft, So it's, uh, but it's uh, all poured into our container. It has a nice lemon smell. What I did was use, give one second. In this particular case, I just used a uh, lemongrass essential oil just to give it kind of a, a scent, um, a pledge-like scent, and then uh, dumped it in the container let it congeal and harden up and now it's it's ready to be used so and these little containers i just got on off amazon at the moment and uh so we're we're experimenting with that uh trying to see if maybe that's something we could do as a uh, kind of a value added product for our beeswax line so uh, like i said we're always looking for things that number one customers want and uh also things that we can make a fairly good profit at so Anyways, that's kind of where we're at. The only other thing I did not cover was our comb honey. Uh, I don't have any of that right now, but that, that's the other thing we're dabbling with. We did really well. Last year was, a, was the first year we did that, but perhaps, you know, n this next year we'll get into that a little bit farther as well. So, um, any comments that you guys have? Any suggestions? Any things that work, didn't work? We would love to hear about it. Um, nothing more frustrating than, than trying something and knowing that other people have tried it, well, not knowing that other people have tried it, it didn't work, and, and not knowing that until you've made that same mistake. So if you've got any suggestions, love to hear it. Uh, in the meantime, really, really appreciate you guys watching. Appreciate you guys subscribing, uh, getting the hitting the notification button, and uh, you know, following along with us on this journey. We really appreciate it. See you next time.